So phase four of the post office Horizon IT inquiry started all the way back in July 2023 and has finally come to a close. It's one of the most substantial parts of the inquiry so far and we've heard from lots of different people, lots of interesting testimony. Um, despite that, there are still more people who've been called to submit evidence. We're just going to review on the evidence which hasn't been examined orally by counsel at the inquiry and these people haven't been called to testify about their evidence so far but nevertheless their statements will be added to the record for the post office inquiry to consider and we will of course go through them during this opportunity break between the end of phase four and the start of phase five. Let's jump into the closing statements from Jason Beer KC to the post office inquiry. Good morning, sir. Can you see and hear us? Yes, I can. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Before we uh, proceed to hear submissions from core participants, I would like, um, if I may please, to address you in relation to the status of written statements that have been obtained for the purposes of phase four of the inquiry uh, from individuals who have not appeared before you to give oral evidence. Yeah. To ensure that the inquiry has obtained as full a picture of phase four issues as possible. Uh, rule nine requests were sent to a wide pool of individuals, a wider pool than those who have ultimately been called to give oral evidence before you. Uh, this was the case for each category of phase four witness we've heard from, mm -hmm. namely post office policy and practice witnesses, criminal prosecution case study witnesses, and civil recovery case study witnesses. Where the individual has decided, sorry, where the inquiry has decided that it's not necessary to hear oral evidence from individuals who've provided written statements, their statements will be admitted into evidence and treated as having been read into the record, and the witness statements will shortly be disclosed on the inquiry's website. I should say that the fact that the statements are to be read into the record does not mean that the accounts given within them is agreed by each of the core participants. It's necessarily untested evidence. Could we have on the screen, please, INQ 40-2020? I guess there's the potential for the inquiry to be extended to explore any of these statements further if they should prove somewhat controversial in nature. This is a PowerPoint presentation with a series of slides which the inquiry team has prepared, listing the written statements that are to be read into the record, set out by category of witness. Can we go to slide two, please? Uh, on this slide, we have a list of witness statements relating to post office uh, policy and practice. You can see the names of each of the witnesses there and the unique reference numbers of their witness statements. As I've said, they will be uploaded to the inquiry's website. The individuals listed here were all sent Rule 9 requests based on the description of their roles held at the post office at the relevant time. They've not been called to give oral evidence because there were other witnesses who were better placed to speak to the given areas of policy and practice. We'll make sure we go and review them. Uh, I imagine they've already been published on the inquiry's website now. Um, as the inquiry is on a break, we should have a chance to review them and see if there's any new information that comes out of them. Can we go to slide three, please? The witnesses listed on this page were each sent Rule 9 requests because they were auditors involved in one or more of the criminal investigation and prosecution case studies that you selected for phase four. Their written evidence is informative as to the practices of auditors insofar as it's relevant to phase four issues. But their oral evidence would not have added materially to the evidential picture. What it will allow us to see, I guess, when we review those is whether or not it concurs with the accounts of those that we have heard from um, with their understanding and experience in their similar roles as post office auditors. Can we go to the next slide, please? Uh, the witnesses listed here held other roles in relation to phase four criminal investigation and prosecution case studies, namely financial investigation and contract advisor roles. 
again, it was considered that these witnesses uh, attending to give evidence would not add materially to the evidential picture. Uh, slide five, please. All of these witnesses have provided witness statements relating to the Cleveland Post Office civil recovery case study. The first listed witness is um, Julie Kay, uh, previously Wollstone Home, the sub postmistress at the branch. The second individual only had fleeting involvement in the case and was unable to take your inquiries further in his statement. The third individual provided a corporate disclosure statement on behalf of Royal Mail in relation to the disclosure of documents relevant to the Cleveland's case. Uh, slide six, please. The individuals listed here provided witness statements in relation to their knowledge of relevant events at the Marine Drive Post Office, a further civil recovery case study. A lawyer from Bond Pierce, two temporary sub postmasters, a member of staff at the branch, and an employee of Fujitsu. I guess the name that stands out a lot there is Brian Pinder's name, because his name came up an awful lot in the evidence that we reviewed with um, the Fujitsu witnesses that have been seen in phase four. So it'll certainly be interesting to look at this witness statement. And I guess from another point of view, not necessarily from inquiry evidence, but um, certainly in the sub postmaster we spoke to in a live interview on the channel and other conversations with sub postmasters, there were some questions raised about obviously if the sub postmaster that was suspended was experiencing shortfalls and it was a system issue, did this continue under the temporary sub postmasters that were appointed during the course of their suspension? And it would appear from their accounts and um, that they've said that these did indeed happen, but appeared to apparently be ignored. So it'll be interesting to see what they've said with their experience at, Madri at Marine Drive, which was, of course, Lee Castleton's post office. Can we go to the last slide, please? Page seven. Finally, sir, there are some written statements relating to phases two and three of the inquiry, which have been received by the inquiry since I addressed you at the end of phase three in relation to written records to be read into the record in the same way as I'm um, reading them in now. Thank you. That uh, PowerPoint presentation can come down. But those are the statements the inquiry team wished to be read into the record at this stage. I should pause to say that the inquiry has re received a significant volume of disclosure in the course of phase uh, four and the phase four hearings, and it expects to receive more disclosure that um, is relevant or may be relevant to phase four in the near future. We will um, keep, of course, those documents under review and will disclose them to core participants as soon as reasonably practicable after their receipt. Uh, I should say, as we've said before, the inquiry team will not seek to uh, hesitate to recall any witnesses uh, where it considers it's necessary to do so to put questions to them on new documents that have come to light. The appropriate time to do that will be determined in due course, but will likely be during the phase five and six hearings, should that be necessary. Uh, that's all I uh, wish to say at the moment, sir, in terms of reading documents into the record. And we move now to the closing submissions from the core participants in an order which you have um, directed, starting, I think, with Mr Maloney.